All right, well, it's a new day, and uh, the rot just keeps going and going. Um, that right there took me uh, damn near two hours to get out. Um, when they redid this deck to cover everything up, they just put super, super amounts of fiberglass and resin over the top of it to make it look like it was going, it was strong. Uh, because as you can see, it is just completely rotted, and it was not soft right there. That was as hard as a rock. You could push on it whatever you wanted, but it had probably a half inch of mat and fiberglass uh, on top of it, so therefore you didn't see it. Um, and that is a kick plate that goes up right there. I have it on both sides behind the helm. Um, and behind it's more foam. So I'm trying to cut that out. And I went and bought me one of these Dremel Multimax tools. And uh, although it works pretty good, you go through blades like crazy. Um, it works good for getting into tight spots and uh, you know getting all that, that garbage out but it's, it doesn't cut through wood very fast. So it's definitely not the speediest thing in the world, but it's good for precision cuts. And uh, that hole comes up right close to there and I'm trying my damnedest not to, uh, to, to cut through that hole. I mean, it is perfect. So uh, I'm trying to get all this out and figure out exactly how far it goes. This side, I think, is gonna be worse than that side because you can see how wet and everything it is right there versus how it's not right in there. And you can see where the stringer actually stops being wet up in this area. So. I think I'm going to be, uh, it's, it's not going to be, you know, quite as bad up in there, although I'm still going to have to redo it all, so I don't know what I'm worried about. But anyway, and all this carpet seems to be held down with the atomic glue. Uh, it doesn't ever want to come up. I don't care what it is. And plus, on top of that, it's cold out here. It's probably uh, 40s, and I'm in the shade, and so all that stuff is frozen. Uh, it froze last night hard, and so all this stuff is just very, very difficult to work with. Uh, your hands get uh, cold, everything gets cold, it's just no fun whatsoever. So that's where I am right now. I'm just going to keep cutting. Um, this is going to be a humongous project. I mean, it'll probably take me a good month to get all this crap out of here. That's just, it, it's just plain and simple. Um, I don't know how in the heck I'm going to end up doing all this. Okay, so I've been freezing my tail off all day long and uh, I've come to realization that I'm going to need to get a place to work on this thing. Uh, this is going to be a lot bigger project and keeps growing and growing every day, or every moment, I should say. Um, I'm starting to smell gas now, which is kind of weird. I started tearing apart the uh, foam here and I uh, started kind of getting whiffs of gas. Then again, though, I'm stepping on the tank, so I'm probably, you know, smelling the fumes being purged out through the vent. Uh, vent. But um, it is, uh, the foam is, is waterlogged. I say not completely waterlogged, but you can see there's water here. It's up underneath the foam. There's the hull. And you can see this is how these, these uh, boats are constructed. They're bedded in this like goo here. Um, and uh, that's going to be the biggest, hardest thing is getting all this foam out. What I'm doing is I'm taking a good old trusty sheetrock saw right here and I'm cutting little uh, channels and then I'm using my little trenching tool that I use to bury wire uh, and I'm basically prying it out. And it's coming out in pretty good sized chunks but this stuff is very very hard to get out. Uh, I mean there's probably 10 hours of removing this crap before I'm even ready and I'm putting it into trash bags to haul off to the dump and it's everywhere. There's so much foam in here it's not even funny. And foam is needed. Uh, it helps with structure, uh, it helps flotation, but uh, you know, they, they just, and the thing is though, is that these stringers are, are covered in a, no, they're, are they? Yeah, they, they've got some fiberglass on them, but you can see what causes this, this is the outer skin of the stringer. So water gets down in there and freezes and expands it out. And, uh, and then basically then it breaks the, the structure. Then more water gets in there, freezes and expands out. You can see what that water does. It makes the space between the stringers and the foam gone as it swells up and it just keeps Little by little, ruining it one step at a time. So uh, that's what I got to get out. And then, like I said, look how far. This is a huge bed of of snot, whatever they use there. It looks like a PL or a construction glue. So that's what I'll try to replicate. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the foam out of here uh, before I start uh, actually uh, tearing these stringers out so I can see exactly how it's constructed. But I got a lot of work ahead of me. And I all right, you can see I cut out what's behind here beside the engine, I'm trying to get right up there to get all this junk out. Like I said before, when it warms up a little bit, I want to run this thing really good and make sure it's 100% before we pull it out. 
last thing I do I want to do is take this out, not do anything to it, put it back in, and we got a real problem. So I'm going to run it, check everything uh, one more time, run a full compression test on it. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's okay, but like I said, I'm not take, I'm not taking anything for granted. Anyway, so you can see this is all just ice. You see that? And that's the underside of the deck. There's more rotten stringers. It's all the way back. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to be into the uh, transom, which I know how to do a transom. That's a piece of cake. It's the uh, stringers that scare the crap out of me. Anyway, on I go. Boy, I got to tell you, this foam's a pain in the ass. And I can show you something here. You got to watch out your knee, these stupid little screws sticking up. I've been trying to get them all out, but apparently I just missed that one. Damn, that hurt. Anyway, um, you can see what freeze damage does to, uh, to a stringer when water gets down in there. You can see that uh, the engine the stringer run it up this way and it was laminated in fiberglass. But I noticed how soft it was when I was pushing on it. Well, if you pull it up, there's your stringer down there. And it's actually, it's just black. It's not, uh, it is not rotted yet. It's still gonna get cut out. But at least it'll help me make a template. These, I'm not sure sure gonna allow me to make a template. But uh, at least the big ones I'll be able to. Uh, and uh, yeah, what happens is the water gets down in here and it freezes and then it expands everything. And over cycles of that going in and out, in and out, it absolutely ruins the uh, inside of the boat. So, oh, and another thing, that's where the old deck was, where they cut it out, that was the seam. All I did was just rip it up to that spot and you can see how black and dingy it is in there. So whoever did this deck just did it without a care. They just cut it out, stuck in the stuff that you step on. You don't see anything else. Whatever you see on the surface is good. Whatever you see below, what you don't see, don't worry about it. So I'm the one who got screwed into it. So let's move on. I gotta get this thing uh, hopefully done before May. And it is uh, January 2nd. So oh, I'll get a lot of work. Anyway, so moving on. That's where we are so far. I got uh, probably 80% of the deck out and I'm leaving the front up there until last because I got to figure out how in the heck I'm going to do that. But I'll get everything else up there so that way I have some working room. All right, well, I think I'm done for the weekend. Um, I got that side, uh, you know, devoid of, uh, of uh, foam. And I tell you, that stuff is a pain in the butt to get out. Because you don't want to get in there and get too rambunctious with digging tools because you can poke through the bottom of the boat. So you just want to make sure you take your time. And I've found that, oh, this guy right here, which is a pry bar, sliding in, prying up, sliding in, prying up, works great. And uh, I use this big saw right here to saw them into chunks and break out the big chunk. Let's see how much is in the bed of the truck so far. And I still have that huge block and all this back here to get out. I'll tell you, the easiest part to get out was the ones on the far side of that stringer right there. You have to forgive me. It's hard to walk because there's really not much any deck left to stand on. So, um, and you can see it's bad. You know, I'm beginning to think that all boats will do this um, with this foam construction like this. It just traps moisture. There's no for, nowhere where it to go, for it to go and it just wicks it up in there and it just sits and sits and sits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this interior into a bathtub, meaning that everything is sealed to the edges all the way up. It's going to be completely gel coated and sealed completely so no water can get back down in there. Um, it, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm still just floored at how much work this is going to be, but luckily I saw um, a post on the, on the iBoats of how he did a 20 foot one of these where he cut in here which I was kind of worried about because there's no rot on those things, but those support structures do have to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them in half and of course remove the carpet because we're going to end up putting gel coat on it and everything, but remove the carpet. And then that way I can get up underneath there and take these stringers up as far as they need to go um, to, to cut them out, which is going to be, you know, all the way up to the front of the boat. So um, that's the hard part is getting all that junk out of there. So what I'm going to do is just keep going on this back part. Get the easy stuff done first. That's the key is don't sit here and fret over the little small stuff. This morning I was stressing about all this mess up in here. I just took a step back and said, you know what? The hell with it. Let's just get all the stuff I know I can get to, get it taken care of, get it cut out and get it prepped. That way when it comes up into here, you know, at least you can look back and go, hey, I got all this back here done. 
So whereas when I'm up there working on that, you look back and you're just, it's such a daunting task. So break these up into goals, manageable goals you can do in a day. And I turned around after lunch and I said, you know what, I'm gonna try to get this port side almost completely clean of its foam. And I got almost there. If sun's going down and it's uh, now down in the mid thirties, so it's really cold uh, and the wind's starting to kind of pick up. So I'm gonna clean up and uh, get my tools. I need to go back in my work van and my work van and uh, cover the boat up and uh, call it an evening. And then uh, if I can hit it again this week, I will. Um, just to you know, try to tear this apart. It's supposed to be kind of warm this week, so we'll be able to see how it goes.